You're listening to the MMA 30 Radio Hour with Dave Farah and Jason Mahoney. Nice. Our guest right now here on the MMA 30 Radio Hour is Mark the Hitman Kentman. Big fight coming up on Thursday, and apparently you've been training by surrounding yourself with rabid dogs. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm at the dog park right now, so uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's what you're hearing in the back. Got my dog giving a little exercise. You got a big fight coming up again. It's this Thursday, UFC on Versus 3. Uh, you're headlining the card against Diego Sanchez. Diego back in the welterweight division. It's a big fight for you, man, and you've been getting some really high-profile fights as of late, but when they first approached you about the idea of fighting Diego Sanchez, how did you respond? Uh, I, mean, I was uh, I was down for it, you know. I thought I think uh, you know he's a he's a, got a you know great name in the UFC, and uh, you know he's a solid, uh, tough tough opponent. So I, I took it. You know, I thought it was a great opportunity. Diego's kind of an interesting guy. Some people call him crazy. Some people just say that he he's a little bit off. But uh, he says that he is one hundred percent focused again. He kind of let himself go there for a while with all of the smoking weed and partying and everything else. But now he is dialed back in and one hundred percent ready to focus on his career in the UFC. Do you buy all that, or do you think that maybe it's just him trying to say the right things? No, I think, you know, he, for his last fight, he looked uh, really motivated. You know, he looked uh, very motivated, and, you know, he's back at Jackson's train there, and, uh, you know, he looked, he, looked, he looked real good in his last fight, I think, against uh, Paul Thiago. So I'm definitely expecting the, the best Diego Sanchez there is. Are you specifically focusing any of your training on any one specific area uh, for this fight with Diego, or how's your training going for it? Uh, I mean, my, all my hard training is uh, pretty much winded down. You know, I had my last hard sparring session. I've had my last hard cardio session. So right now it's just, you know, maintaining up until the fight, you know. Just been packing my stuff. I'm leaving for Kentucky in the morning. But, uh, you know, I've been, you know, of course I've been looking at Diego's tapes. And, you know, uh, he's a southpaw, so I've been preparing for that. And his last fight he was actually switching a little bit back and forth. But, uh, hey, what's up, guys? Um <laughs> But, but, uh, a bunch of UFC fighters hanging out in the dog park. What's going on out there? No, no, no other UFC fighters. Just other people uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so you think that you're going to face the best Diego Sanchez. Where do you think he is the biggest threat? Is it the takedowns? Yeah, I think he's definitely going to gonna, gonna try to uh, take the fight uh, to the ground, you know. So, uh, you know, that's that's how he used to, to beat people in the in the past. You know, he take him down, you know, relentless with the ground and pound and, 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 and uh, relentless pace, you know, just to... Uh, uh, you know he's known to just you know keep the pace going throughout the whole fight. So I'm I'm expecting him to uh, try to take me down. Of course I'm I'm not going to let that happen. You know I want to I want to punish him standing. I feel I feel confident in my stand up. I, I think I don't know, I feel I feel I can fight with him anywhere. But I definitely feel I have the bigger advantage in the stand up. Our guest today here on the MMA 30 Radio Hour is Martin the Hitman Campman. He's fighting Diego Sanchez this Thursday night in Louisville, Kentucky for UFC on Versus 3. We saw on your fight against Jake Shields that you displayed a uh, an excellent sense of uh, of uh, awareness on the ground, and we saw you you know, even going for quite a few submissions against uh, Jake Shields, who's well known for his uh, jiu-jitsu. How do you think, do you think there's a possibility if it does, if Diego does get you on your back, that you will be able to submit him from your back? Um, I mean, if I'm going to fight on the ground with Diego, I'll definitely prefer to be on top, you know, but, uh, you know, I'm, I feel confident in my ground game. And, and of course, you know, if, uh, if he gives me a submission, I'm going to, I'm going to take it. But you know, if, if I get on my back, I'm my first priority is probably going to be to be, get back to my feet, you know, but I mean, if the uh, submission's there, I'm definitely going to go for it. Sure. Most fighters say they don't pay a lot of attention to it, but they're at least aware of it. Uh, in almost all the sports books that I've seen, as a matter of fact, actually, I think in all of the sports books that I've seen, you are the favorite in this fight. Does that surprise you, or do you think that that's a fair assessment that you should be the favorite going into this one? Well, in my mind, I'm always the favorite. You know, so, <laughs> that's right. Uh, um, you know, but you know, I'm happy. To, you know, but if the bookies agree to that, that's you know, good for them. You know, it's uh, otherwise they're probably going to lose some money. I don't know. Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter, you know, the, the odds, you know, I still got to go in there and, 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 and do the job, you know, and and, uh, and uh, that's all it comes down to, you know. A lot of people say that you earned a lot of fans and a lot of respect by that fight uh, with Jake Shields being so close. A lot of people, including myself, thought that you won that fight. Uh, do you think that it's true that you earned a lot of respect from fans and from the bookies alike for that one? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I was, I was to the point of my own performance in that fight, and I felt I didn't fight the, the best fight I could have. And I think I can beat Jake Shields, and 
you know, I'd love to fight him again. I, I still think I can beat him. And, and uh, you know, I gave that fight away by doing some stupid mistakes. And, and it was pretty much, you know, my own mistakes that cost me to lose the fight, you know. Uh, so, um, I don't know. I, I'd love to fight him again and, and uh, show I can beat him. I believe in my heart I can beat him. And... Um, I forgot what even what the question was, but uh. <laughs> I asked if you'd earned a lot of respect, and I think the answer is oh. yes. Uh, but Martin Kamen, our guest today here on the MMA Thirty Radio, R, we've got a really interesting situation going on right now in the UFC's welterweight division, and one that presents an amazing opportunity potentially for you, George St. Pierre, if he beats Jake Shields, which almost everyone thinks that he will. Come April thirtieth, he's going to move up to one hundred and eighty-five pounds and take on Anderson Silva for a super fight. GSP has said, if I win and I move up to one eighty-five, I'm staying at one eighty-five. That means that he's going to vacate his title. If you come out and you beat Diego Sanchez in a dominant way on Thursday night, you've got to think that that puts you right up there, don't you? Uh, I'm definitely thinking, you know, of course, uh, you know, a win always puts you closer to a title. You know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, too worried about that. Of course, the ultimate goal is to get a title shot, but right now I'm just focused on winning my fights, you know, one, winning one fight at a time, and then every fight uh, keep moving closer, you know. But, uh, you know, Every time they say, you know, the winner of this fight, get a title shot, win that fight, you know, you got to get it first, you know. Sometimes they change their mind. And, and uh, you know, even so, you know, I, I prefer to fight, you know, I'm going to fight George. He's the best guy. You know, I'd rather fight him for a title than, 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 than if he gives it up, you know. So you would be upset to see George St. Pierre leave the welterweight division? Oh, well, I got no right. You know, I can't be upset, you know, but that's his <laughs> own decision. But... But, uh, no, if I was fighting him for the title, he's the guy I would want to fight because he's the best. You know, he, he's the best for a reason. He, he's been the champ for a long time, and he's, uh, you know, he's an amazing fighter, and, I, you know, I enjoy watching him fight. But uh, those are the guys I want to fight. I want to fight the best guys, you know. No secret that the UFC loves exciting fights. Do you think that your fight with Diego Sanchez is going to present itself an opportunity for you to finish in an exciting fashion? Do you think that you could possibly get the knockout or dazzle him with some crazy submission in order to get that "quote unquote" exciting win? Oh, I'd love to get the knockout. You know, I feel it's time to get back to my, uh, uh, you know, back to my roots. You know, side boxing and boxing, and, and you know, I'd definitely love to get the knockout. Um, I think this this fight definitely got a recipe for. Uh, for a, for a great fight, you know, Diego always brings it. He's there to fight, you know, no, he's not just there to come and lay on you and, and, and give a boring, grind out a boring win, you know, he's there to fight. And uh, so am I, so I think this is going to be action-packed. Definitely looking forward to Thursday night when Martin Campman takes on Diego Sanchez in that main event, UFC on Versus 3. Always a pleasure, man. Thanks so much for taking some time for the MMA 30 Radio Hour while you're out walking your dog today, and uh, we'll talk to you soon, bro. Sure thing, anytime. It's the MMA 30 Radio Hour with Dave Farah and Jason Mahoney. For the latest, go to MMA30.com.